This morning we're going to cover in PowerShell how to edit job scripts in SQL Server. And I'm going to refer you to the subscriber only video in which we talk about how to copy a job from one server not in the other. Because this is where this will come in very handy or this will come in handy if we need to migrate jobs. So if you're trying to migrate jobs or you're trying to copy jobs in one server not in another, and that private video is very useful, that's for subscribers only. But that private video is very useful because it covers how to do that in both of those situations. Um, you'll just use the same script in both situations. This, what we're going to do is take it another step further. So some of this uh, script will refer to what we've covered in that script, and I'm not going to recover the same ground because we already covered it once. So in, in this instance, what we're going to do is just a simple how to edit the script. So what we have done here is we have basically created the SMO object, Microsoft.SQLServer.Management.SMO.Server. We have established a file location, and we're now doing our for each job in server.jobserver.jobs. And this should look familiar from that, that private video, because it's pretty much the same thing. So we declare a variable called job name, or J, I'm sorry, J name, and that's going to get the job name. We're going to then apply our clean strings function, which again, you can see that previous video on what this does, but it cleans a string. And then we're doing, again, the same thing here. All of this is kind of repeat. We're establishing our file to equal the file plus the job name plus dot SQL. Okay, now in a script that I'll save to that private location, the other thing that you can do instead of script is you and saving it to a location is you can go ahead and um, copy the job by executing the command to the other server. So let's say that you're trying to migrate jobs from server one to server two. You can actually go ahead and copy those jobs directly from server one to server two. There is some concerns and I would be very careful because in PowerShell you have a lot of power but you can also make huge mistakes. So if you do that, don't ever run that in production and make sure that everything is accurate. Okay, so now we're gonna create a variable called C and we're gonna set it to the job.script and this is where things start becoming different. We're gonna add to C, use msdb go. This is where our jobs are stored. And now, and this is the key part of this video here, is what we're going to do is we're going to replace C so C is right now holding the script. We're going to replace where server1 slash instance, we're going to replace that with server10 slash instance. So, and this was uh, for the record tested yesterday and this works very, very well. If we need to migrate, let's say 50 jobs, and the problem with the jobs that we're migrating is, is that they refer to server1 instance. I've seen this with a lot of developers. They will NT SQL try to go in and you know edit the job steps. This right here will automate everything. And then if you go ahead and you execute, in this case we're scripting, but let's say you were to execute the command, you can literally do two things in one. You can edit the script and then copy the job all in one step. And that saves a huge amount of work. In this case, what we're doing is we're going to script it. We're going to save that script to the file and it's always a good idea to do just because you have something to back up or in some environments for instance let's say it's a QA environment or a dev environment you may have a team that reviews the code before it goes on the server and so in this case this is how this is kind of built so we have server 1 instance being replaced with server 10 instance and let's suppose we needed to replace another line of code for instance let's suppose we needed uh, C to replace, um, we don't want the job, let's say hypothetically, to be enabled. So we're going to look for where enabled equals one, so the job is enabled, or the, the schedule is enabled, and we're going to say enabled equals zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to find all the instances where the job is enabled, then we're going to disable it. Now if the job's already disabled, no problem. Uh, but if the job is enabled, it will go ahead and replace that as well. So think about that in terms of your scripts. In some cases, not always, but in some cases, um, 
You can easily migrate jobs with PowerShell and it literally doesn't take very much time at all. And then you can sit there and automate what you need to replace. If you know you're going to you know, copy it from one server to another, keep in mind, look at what we have here. If we declared this as a variable, we would automatically know this here. And then if we had the other server listed like we did in that other that private video, we could list that here as well. So we can take steps to do the automation. I will note here, this is one of the reasons why I don't like SSIS and I don't recommend SSIS. It's, it's okay for some environments, but let's suppose that your job step copies SSIS, or I'm sorry, calls SSIS, okay? You still have to go through and upload those packages. So if you use SSIS, PowerShell is not going, I mean, you can, you can start working and automating it in PowerShell, but it's more complicated, whereas if you have all of your uh, job steps being called either using PowerShell or T-SQL, and understand, PowerShell and T-SQL can do every single thing that PowerShell can do. If T-SQL can't do it, PowerShell can. There's absolutely no reason to use um, SSIS. Anything, for instance, copying um, files from one location to another, PowerShell can do. So then you don't need SSIS. Uh, let's say doing a bulk insert, which a lot of people do. You can do that in T-SQL. You don't need SSIS. It, it, it's amazing how many people don't know how to do a bulk insert in T-SQL, but you don't need SSIS for it. So anything that you do in SSIS, you can do in either PowerShell or T-SQL. Well, then think about it. With those being written in the step, we don't have to copy packages and move them to locations. We can just script the step and then... Um, edit the, the script as we need and either put it to a file or go ahead and execute it on that server and copy the job. So migrating jobs becomes very easy to do in PowerShell if we have created our job in a right way that allows us to do it easily. If we haven't and we call something like DTS or SSIS, it's going to be a little more complicated.